Okay, enthalpy. There's a funny word. Okay, chemical reactions can be exothermic or endothermic. And here we have prefixes again. Exo, as in going out, exiting. An exothermic reaction gives off thermal energy, gives off heat. Endothermic, endo like going in, into, they absorb energy. The amount of thermal energy that's absorbed or emitted is called enthalpy. Okay? Enthalpy um, is abbreviated with a capital H. Don't ask me why. Um, enthalpy of reaction, delta H reaction. We're always looking at the change in enthalpy. Okay? Uh, a particular beaker of stuff has an enthalpy, but it's not easy to measure what the enthalpy is. But we can measure the change in enthalpy when a reaction occurs. So that's why it's delta H. Amount of thermal energy or heat that flows when a reaction occurs at constant pressure. So the sign of delta H, like the sign of Q, the heat that we calculated, um, depends on the direction. So energy flowing out of the chemical system is like a withdrawal of energy and has a negative sign. So here, this corresponds to maybe your online bank statement, right? I used to say check register, but we don't do that anymore. So if there's a negative amount in your bank statement, that means that money was withdrawn from your account. It left your account. So money is like the energy, and it's leaving your account. The account is the reaction. If money comes in, it's a positive number. So when energy comes into, is absorbed by a reaction, then delta H is positive. OK? So here we have an illustration of an exothermic reaction. So here, the reactants have a high energy initially, but when they react, energy is given off, and so the products have a lower amount of energy. Your bank balance is high to start with, but money left, and now the balance is lower. An endothermic reaction, the reactants start out at a lower energy and end with products at a higher energy because energy came in. So here, the amount of money in your checking account went up because there was an endothermic reaction. There was an influx of cash. Any questions? So delta H is negative for exothermic reactions. If we look at this reaction, this is uh, combustion of methane. So methane reacts with oxygen gas, forms carbon dioxide and water. That's an exothermic reaction. That's why we burn natural gas in our stove burners to give off heat, to get things hot. So the change in energy, the enthalpy of the reaction is negative 802.3 kilojoules. So 802.3 kilojoules of energy are released from the reaction into the surroundings. The magnitude, the 802, tells us how much. The sign tells us which direction it's going. If you burn a little bit of natural gas, you get a little bit of heat. If you burn a lot of natural gas, you get a lot of heat. And so this, this amount of heat is going to depend on how much methane we're burning. So the convention is that this heat of reaction 802 applies to molar amounts of the balanced chemical equation. So we're going to get 802.3 kilojoules released for one mole of methane and two moles of oxygen being reacted. We're going to get 802.3 kilojoules of energy released when one mole of carbon dioxide forms, when two moles of water form. That's how we do it just by convention. Heat of reaction or enthalpy of reaction is positive for endothermic reactions. When nitrogen and oxygen react to form nitrogen monoxide, N2 plus O2 giving two, no, then that absorbs energy from the surroundings. So we see this positive uh, enthalpy of reaction. 
182.6 kilojoules absorbed for every one mole of nitrogen and one mole of oxygen used and every two moles of nitrogen monoxide produced. So the amount of heat absorbed or emitted depends on the amount of reactants. That should make sense. So that, that magnitude is for the chemical reaction as written in the unit on those uh, amounts is assumed to be moles. So here we have the balanced chemical equation for the combustion of propane. This is what's used in outdoor barbecues. So we've got propane reacting with five moles of oxygen and again forms carbon dioxide and water. 2,044 kilojoules of energy released for every one mole of this and for every five moles of that. We have a potential for another conversion factor here. We're going to get this amount of energy for one mole of this. That's a conversion factor. We get 2,044 kilojoules, that's not a K, kilojoules per one mole of propane. We get 2,044 kilojoules for how many moles of water formed? Four. If I had three moles of CO2, how much energy would be released? Two thousand forty four. So I can take this amount with any reactant or product. It's the coefficient, moles, and the formula. Okay? Now what about this sign? Well, the sign gives direction. Okay? Sometimes we have to give the, the sign and the answer, and other times we don't. And I'm sorry that is confusing. Okay, ammonia reacts with oxygen according to this equation. It says calculate the heat in joule, kilojoules associated with the complete reaction of 155 grams of ammonia. Does anything in this uh, statement here suggest that the heat is being released or absorbed? It just says associated. We're going to have to use the sign here, okay? Because this negative sign tells me what? Is it being absorbed or emitted? Emitted. emitted. It's given off. The money is leaving my wallet. So what we're going to do here, this is related to stoichiometry, grams to moles to moles to grams. We're just going to switch it up a little bit. So we did grams to moles to moles to grams is what we've been doing. But this time, what do we want to find? Well, we can't go moles to grams because they gave us grams to start with. So grams, we can convert to moles. So we could do grams of, of ammonia to moles of ammonia, and then what are they asking us for? Calculate the heat in kilojoules. Do I have to convert this to moles of something else? I could, but it'd be a waste of time. This equation tells me that four moles of ammonia are going to release 906 kilojoules. So. I don't need these last two. I'm just going directly to kilojoules here. So 155 grams of ammonia. I'm going to convert that to moles of ammonia. I'm going to put grams of ammonia in the denominator so those cancel out. And then I'm going to go kilojoules and moles of ammonia. 
I can do that because I know that minus 906 kilojoules is associated with the reaction of four moles of ammonia. You okay with that? Molar mass of ammonia. We did that earlier, so I'm not going to do that over again. 155 divided by 17.034 times negative 906. Excuse me, negative 8244.1 and a bunch of zeros. The unit is kilojoules. How many significant figures? Three. So my starting mass only has three significant figures. My enthalpy of reaction only has three significant figures. This is not an exact number. Those are measured. So I need three significant figures. When I round this, I notice that I'm rounding in the tens place. That means I need to be careful. So if I change, if I change the ones place to a zero, I'll be OK. But my experience is a lot of students don't do that, and they call this 824. Um, so then I should put it in scientific notation. Uh, one, two, three. Now I can round it here without worrying. And I've got minus 8.24 times 10 to the third. It's an ugly three. 10 to the third kilojoules. The sign is important here because it's asking us to calculate the heat associated. It doesn't say the heat emitted. If it said calculate the amount of heat emitted, then I could just say 8,240 kilojoules. But there's nothing in the question that implies direction. Any questions? Um, what mass of butane in grams is necessary to produce 1.5 times 10 to the third kilojoules of heat? What mass of CO2 is produced? And there's a balanced chemical equation. What's odd about that equation? It's got fraction in it. That's not how we usually balance chemical equations, but that's what we're given, and so it's okay. This amount of energy relates to these molar amounts. Four moles of that, 13 halves, which is seven and a half, no, six and a half <laughs> moles of that, four of this, five of that. So don't, don't let that freak you out or anything. So we've got... Um, Oh, I didn't do this on the last problem. So here's, here's amount of heat. Right, so I've got 1.5 times 10 to the third kilojoules of heat. And what do they want me to find? One question is, what's the mass of CO2? What's the other question? How many grams of butane, C4H10? How would you know that C4H10 was butane? Do you know what the other ones are? Is this butane? No, that's oxygen. Is this butane? No, that's carbon dioxide. Is this butane? No, that's water. So that's got to be butane. I'll try not to do that to you on an exam, but it. it could very well happen in the homework. So they're asking me for two answers. Well, let's just do one at a time. So our, our standard thing was grams to moles to moles to grams. Well, 
grams are the question for both of these. So we can't start with grams. The only thing we have a number for is kilojoules. We can go from kilojoules to moles of any of these. So this time we're going to get rid of these first two terms and do kilojoules there. So we're going to go kilojoules to moles of butane to grams of butane. 1.5 times 10 to the third kilojoules times moles of butane per kilojoules. And then we're going to go to grams of butane per mole of butane. It's like variations on a theme here. What's the relationship between moles of butane and kilojoules? Yep, four moles of butane makes two, six, five, eight kilojoules of energy. What about the negative sign? Well, let's stick it in there and see what happens. And then grams of butane, excuse me, to moles of butane, I don't feel like writing this down. Uh, 4 times 12.01 plus 10 times 1.008. I'm getting 58.12 grams is one mole. So I've got 1.5 EE3 times 4 divided by negative 2658 times 58.12 equals, I'm coming up with minus 131.196 grams. Can you have a negative mass? No. no. What happened? This is a situation where we don't need the negative sign in there. Remember, the negative sign gives direction. Is the energy leaving? Is the energy coming into the reaction? So we recognize that a negative mass is silly. So I'm going to get rid of that negative sign. I, I hate to do that because people just throw out negative signs when they shouldn't. But there it is. How many sig figs? Okay, so that is um, 130 grams of butane. So if I want to burn some butane in the, in the grill and I want to give off 1.3 times 10 to the third kilojoules of heat, I need to burn 130 grams of butane. What's the other thing they're asking me to find? grams of CO2. Well, how much CO2 would be released when I do that? There's more than one way that you can get there. I could take this mass of butane and calculate mass of CO2. Or I could take and do a very similar thing, do the kilojoules and go to mass of CO2. I'm going to do that because it's different and it's shorter. So 1.5 times 10 to the third kilojoules of energy. Um, now I'm going to have moles of CO2 on top and kilojoules on the bottom. And then I'm going to have grams of CO2 on top and moles of CO2 on the bottom. So CO2 is also 4 moles. 4 moles of CO2 is released when we make 2,658 kilojoules of energy come out. Should I put the negative sign on there? No. I'm, that would give me a negative mass again. And then CO2 is uh, 44.01. That's 12.01 plus 2 times 32. So I've got 1.5 EE3 times 
times 4 divided by 2658 times 44.01 equals 99.345 and some other digits. Uh, this also has two significant figures, so 99 grams of CO2. Any questions? This delta H is a conversion factor relating moles of something in that equation to the amount of energy released or absorbed. Okay, so often in the homework, you need to use the absolute value of heat. It'll ask you to calculate the heat because words are used. So it'll say, calculate the amount of heat released. Then you express it as a positive number. Calculate the amount of heat absorbed. You're still going to express it as a positive number. If I said, well, how much money did you spend on those headphones? Are you going to say $100 or minus $100? How much money did you spend? A hundred dollars. Spend is the direction, so I don't need the negative sign. Does that make sense? Speaking of combustion, um, these are pictures of a Bunsen burner, and we've used Bunsen burners in class, in lab now. Um, this is what the Bunsen burner looks like if, if it's not getting any air mixed with the natural gas. It looks a lot like a candle. The flame gets really tall and it wavers around, gives off a lot of light. It also gives off a lot of soot. So if you use this to heat a crucible or something, the bottom of it is going to get black. That's usually not something we want. If we increase the amount of air, we start to see this blue cone and that yellow light goes away. Here's an optimum flame. We have a small blue cone on the inside, and this is our, our best, best flame here. If we get too much air, then the flame begins to appear to float above the Bunsen burner. Um, the danger of that is then it's very easy for the flame to go out, and then you've just got gas pouring into your room, and that's no good. 